This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our season will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasoning such as the Cajun, the S&P Bud, the Oak, and the Old Fashioned. Can't go wrong with any of these great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SWIPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off. That is SWIPCAST1010. While you're there, be sure to check out the three great deals that the Mad Canadian has for Christmas. Oh, froze up. Got the freeze ups. Mm, got me there. I, I totally, I apologize. <laughs> I totally forgot what the names of them were there. Well, the whole hog is the, is the entire collection. Uh, then there's the spicy sweet, or is it sweet and spicy? I forget what direction that's in. We have the, the whole hog, the just send it and the sweet heat. Sweet heat. That's what it is. The sweet heat. Check out those, uh, deals that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloop Gas is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, here is the unicorn. Uh, and and I, I point out the unicorn to show you that it's empty. I, I finally opened the unicorn. Um, so the the unicorn, if you don't know, you don't, well, that's the thing. You don't know. You have no idea what's in it. You, you just kind of have to smell it and try it and, and figure it out. Um, so I'm going to guess. That's, that's what I'm going to do for this ad read. Um, ironbeancoffee.com, by the way, to uh, support a veteran-owned and Ohio-based roast-to-order coffee company. All right. Well, again, ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, I think it's blueberry-based. Um, and I know they already have a flavor called the Intense Blueberry, but I think there's something else in here, some sort of spice. So I'm wondering if it's like a blueberry muffin or a blueberry pie. I'm thinking it's something like that. So... That's my guess of what's in my particular bag of unicorn. But the fun thing about the unicorn is you never know what's going to be in it. So what, how, I mean, that, that's just fun, right? Uh, if you want a little bit more control, there are, of course, many, many different coffees available that they'll tell you exactly what's in the bag. And again, you can find all of those at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? How you guys doing? You guys surviving? <laughs> uh, I wonder how much of our YouTube audience is in panic mode and how much of our YouTube audience um, isn't. <laughs> it was a very interesting game. You know what, Kyle? Let's spend an hour talking about it. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. How are you? Oh, just doing fine. Um, could, could you hear it when the dog bumped his nose on the microphone? Okay, so that's just for the YouTube people? Yep, okay, I didn't that's, hear it. That's fine. He, he just straight up like, I'm going to smell this microphone now. And mm -hmm. it bumped and it shook. And, and that's fine. He's a, he's a curious puppy. Kyle, we're here to talk about Ohio State football. Um, let's do two quick pieces of news. Then let's, let's do what everyone came here to do, uh, or at least listen to us do. Uh, and let's talk about Ohio State, Indiana. So let's get those two quick pieces of news out of actually three. Um, because I forgot that because of, you know, our record versus our release schedule, Kyle Quinn Ewers is a Buckeye. He has committed to Ohio state. Yep. The, I forgot that we did not talk about that on the last episode real quick. Yeah. Let me just say this real quick about Quinn Ewers special, like special, special, like real, real good. Very. Um, I know that Ohio state has been getting a lot of good quarterbacks lately I think Quinn Ewers has the opportunity to be the best Ohio State quarterback to ever 
commit to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Anyone who knows how Justin Fields got here <laughs> uh, probably notices uh, my my word selection as as Justin Fields did not commit to Ohio State. Yep, currently Quinn Ewers is the second ranked player according to the composite of 24-7 sports. Uh, yeah, but their proper ratings have him number one. Yes, they do. Yeah. And he's a quarterback, so that that's always worth an extra point or two in my head. Yes. Sir. Because, as we like to say, quarterbacks win championships. All right, Kyle, uh, one of our other two quick pieces of news. Yep. Uh, the... For the first time that we'll talk about it, or officially, the the playoff, the first playoff show will be announced this week and we'll have their first week of, of who's in and who's not for the for the playoffs this year. And we also now have a kickoff time and date. Uh, we already had the date. But we now have a kickoff time and channel, is what I meant to say. For Ohio State versus Illinois, that will be on Fox Sports 1 for some god-awful reason. And that will be a noon kickoff. Kyle, uh, one good piece of news about the playoff show starting this week. We can finally start talking about rankings. Yes. Without apologizing for it beforehand. Mm-hmm. All right, now, now, is when, now is when rankings matter. Yes. And it's it actually from a source that matters. Mm-hmm. unlike yes. the coaches or the AP, which is meaningless. Yep. All right, Kyle, let's get into the bounce back. Ohio State defeats Indiana 42-35. to 35. Kyle, this was not drastically far off from my far- final score prediction. I'd like no, to point that out. It wasn't either for me. I think if it was one less touchdown... About about the same there. About the same. Yeah, if Ohio State had made both of their or no, they they chose not to kick one field goal and miss the second field goal. Yes. If they had done that, then I would have nailed the Ohio State score perfectly. Had they kicked that field goal and had they made that field goal, and if in, if like one of Indiana's touchdowns got magically uh, turned yes. into a field goal, mm-hmm. then I would have so. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a few field goals away from nailing the score prediction. And and I don't say that to brag. That's not that's not my intent here cuz everyone who follows the slew picks closely know I suck at predicting things. I point that out instead, Kyle, uh, to say that this was the game that Kyle and I were attempting to prepare you for. A lot of people have a lot of bad feelings about this Ohio State game. And I'm not here to tell you those bad feelings are wrong. You, we can look at the stats, and we will, and, and talk about some things that are drastically wrong. That being said, this was not unexpected. To a degree. <laughs> okay, okay. The fact that Ohio State was up 35-7 to seven and then gave up all those points. Okay, uh, how we got to that final score was unexpected. I will give you that. Yes, all right. So let's, let's go ahead and back up here. So... First half, Ohio State goes in at halftime 28 to 7. Probably about reasonable around the around the the same the same score that I kind of was feeling for Ohio I, State. At halftime? At halftime there. Yeah. No, I, I think at halftime Indi- and then, then Indy finds Indiana. their way to score more points in the second half. That's going into the game. That's kind of my mentality. But that first half, let's let's talk about the first half though. The first half, Ohio State, very, um, very dominant Kyle, in the first half. Kyle, your video camera has turned off. Who oh, knew? No. Let's turn that back on. There, there we go. go. All right. Um, yeah, the first half, Ohio State, very, very dominant there. Uh, Mostly the second quarter, for being honest. Yes. That, well. Well. Okay, I might be wrong. Please, you continue talking. Other other than the the dumb penal or dumb turnovers that Justin Fields had, yeah. Defensively, Ohio State defense just did exactly what they should have done in that first half. 
they really took care of um really held indiana in check they had the yeah. one drive there which okay yeah you're Indiana's offense was was really good. We knew going in that their offensive um, uh, passing their passing attack, yeah, was really good. Yeah, we what, we we did we we said that many times on the Friday yeah. show. Yeah, but what really took me, what really surprised me, two things: one, the amount of turnovers that Justin Fields had, just the yeah. terrible terrible decisions. Just, yeah. Throwing it up there, hoping for 50 50. Twice. And yeah, it's. I don't know. I don't know if he was trying to preserve his percentage ratio I, or what the case was, but this is that case what uh, we talked about in the past about trying too hard and not doing and just, just doing your assignment not trying yeah. to do too much do your assignment do the dirty work do the hard work yep and everything else goes into line yeah uh yeah I, I totally i'm not going to say that justin fields was consciously attempting to like preserve his lack of incompletions i'm not saying that was what he was thinking when he threw those passes that he should have just thrown away and i'm not saying that he thought that before the game hey i have to make sure to keep but that stuff rolls around in the back of the head. Yep. You hear that noise. It rolls around in the back of your head. And maybe you start to feel a bit invincible. Maybe you start to feel like you can do no wrong. And you get humbled a bit. And it's um, what's weird is that Justin Fields made stupid plays. <laughs> Which is just not something we've seen from him ever at Ohio State was him making, like, egregiously irresponsible plays. Uh, the second two interceptions were, that was just not very smart. No, no, absolutely. Especially how we started, when we first saw the um, well, the game started, Indiana got, Indiana got the ball, I think they had one first down, punted it, Ohio State just went yeah, three, four plays. Two. Okay, two plays, <laughs> two plays, and just scores a touchdown, just ease. And we're like, oh man, this is going to be a blowout here. And we had thought thought that, and then I think it was the next drive, the turnover there, and we're like, oh, all that momentum is slowly dying away. Second quarter comes around, Ohio. Uh, second quarter comes around, Indiana. Uh, scores a touchdown, ties it up, and then right after that, it was just boom, boom, boom Yeah, for Ohio State. And Ohio, the, and Ohio State was able to, I think on one of them, I think it was, no, it was that um, that last touchdown, the fumble recovery going down um, like 95, 96 yards on that final drive of the, of the first half there to yeah. pretty much a 14-point swing, which I run – that's probably the game right there. If you want to really look at it that way too, that one play right there, that recovering that fumble and Ohio state going down and score that that's essentially the game right there, the game difference. All right. So you, you talk about a 14 point swing and I want to, I want to roll that into a, a thing I prepared and I wrote this all in the notes. So Kyle, feel free to jump in and take some of these numbers as well. Don't let me just, read this entire thing all right uh i i basically did something called by the numbers so here are some numbers to keep in mind from this game the number two uh two missed iu fumbles in the first quarter by the referees you want to talk about a 14 point swing a obvious obvious fumble by indiana that they didn't bother to review i've seen big 10 replay officials blow down to the refs to review five yard completion plays in the first quarter on first down. I've seen big 10 official. You have a turnover, a pretty obvious turnover and you, you don't at least have the guys come and take a look at it. And then they actually do take a look at the Penix fumble. That was a fumble. Despite the fact they called it an incomplete pass. Everyone, 
uh, the uh, Mike Pereira came on and said it. Both uh, Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson said, oh yeah, he lost control of that before his hand went forward. He lost control of that before his hand went forward. And then the Big Ten official had the nerve to get back on the mic and say that the original call was confirmed. I would almost not be mad and almost not have brought this up. A, if they had looked at the other play, and B, had simply said, not enough evidence, I would have accept. I wouldn't have liked it, I would have accepted that. You want to say it's confirmed? Oh, no, 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 no. There is nothing confirmed about that. No. All right. Number three is another number to keep in mind. Uh, three interceptions by Justin Fields. Kyle, this was Justin Fields, agree or disagree? This was Justin Fields' worst day as a Buckeye. I would, I would definitely think so, yeah. I don't think he had a game where he had more than two in a game. Definitely definitely the first time he's had more than one interception in a game, I believe. Kyle, he had a college career, three interceptions before this game, total. Mm-hmm. He matched his career total in this game. Now... I point all of this out. I say that Justin Fields had a terrible game. He said so himself in the post-game press conference that he had a terrible game. Anyone watching knows that Justin Fields just had the absolute worst game of his college career. That being said, he threw 60% completion percentage, 300 yards, 10 yards per attempt, two touchdowns. Oh, by the way, he also ran for an additional 78 with a touchdown. So, and this is his worst game ever as an Ohio State Buckeye. So against the Clemson game, he did have two interceptions as well. I, I, I thought there was just the one, but no, it was two interceptions that he had there. Yeah, we all remember the, the last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. But that kid, that rating, that quarterback rating there was 122, which I think is – the lowest that he's ever had. Because if you, if you look at... Whose quarterback rating are you looking at? Um, I'm just looking here, just quickly on ESPNs here. Okay, so I just want to point out that I didn't write it in the notes. I didn't write it in the notes. Um, per Yahoo, it was like 146, his quarterback rating. But For, okay. for the Indiana game? Yeah. Yep, 146. Yep. Oh, okay. You you were talking about the Clemson game. Yeah, the Clemson game, yeah, was his lowest he's ever had is 122, which is still like a 65% completion. He had one touchdown, two interceptions that okay. game. That but would, also that would, consider also consider competition level. Also consider competition. If you want to look at Big Ten and regular season, oh, by far the lowest rating he ever had was against Wisconsin where he was at a rating of 148. Was that the state state? I think I have high school on the mind. Was that the conference championship game where they started off real slow? No, that wasn't. Nope, this was in the regular season. They still won like heavily 38-7 to seven against Wisconsin, but he was 12 for 22 in that game. Okay. Uh, that would be this game. Yes, right here. that game right the there. YouTube. The YouTube watchers, yep. and that that yeah. was his that was his lowest completion ever at Ohio State, fifty four percent. So I guess what we're ultimately trying to get at here is that even though this was one of his worst games, you could argue his worst, the second worst game. It's, it's his worst game. Really, it's still really good. Three hundred yards. He had three total touchdowns for the game. Yes, he had three turnovers as well. But can I? But, I just want to say it. I feel like I was going to bounce around it, but uh, honestly, we we talk too much on this show and have trouble staying under an hour, so I'm just going to say it. Yep. Turnovers aside, turnovers aside, if JT Barrett had put up these numbers, we'd all be clapping from our roofs. <laughs> yes. I'm. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Kyle, number four, another number to keep in mind, mm-hmm. number four which is to say that Ohio State is now 4-0. and oh. I know this feels bad, mm-hmm. and I think one of the reasons this feels bad is because we have a 
a set idea of who and what Indiana is in our head and that that is not accurate this year. Indiana is a very good football team. Mm-hmm. I also want to have a number four here as well for you. And that is okay. four games in a row for Garrett Wilson with over 100 yards a game. Kyle, look down on the list. That was number 100. <laughs> to keep in mind the number 100 for Garrett Wilson's four straight 100-yard games. Right. Well, So Kyle read number 100. Yeah, I never said we had to do them in order. I never said that. So we're fine. Kyle, you want to pick up another one? Uh, sure. So let's see. Do, 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 do. 10, 10, 10 previous to this game. Ryan day has been every big 10 opponent by 10 or more points. Yeah. This is the first game ever in Ryan day's head coaching career that he did not beat a big 10 opponent by 10 or more points. That's impressive. That's incredibly impressive. So I just, Ohio State always does this. Ohio State always does this. Is the thing I was hearing and seeing on Twitter. And no, they don't. Yeah. No, no, they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, 28. Kyle. 28, Jared. Yes. Probably, the, probably, the, probably one of the numbers that everybody knows are here. 28, which is the amount of points Ohio State was up in the third quarter. I w- I'm going to spend... And, if, and I'm going to do this because I feel like the general feeling of Buckeye Nation on Saturday and probably extending into Sunday and Monday is frustration, is anger, is despair, is other words in that general area about how this game went. Mm-hmm. And this is me saying you're right. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this show telling you why you shouldn't feel that way. Why you should feel good, why you should feel this, why you should feel that. I had to include this number here to tell you that you are right. Because while this final score is similar to my prediction, how we got there is upsetting. So I expected Indiana to score this many points. I didn't expect Indiana to score this many points on almost exclusively big plays and on what felt like four straight drives, I'm not sure about that. But it, it just felt like there was a moment, no, because of uh, Sean Wade's uh, pick six. That interrupted that streak. But this felt like a game. Or it felt like in the second half that Indiana offensively could do no wrong and Ohio State defensively could do no right. And that's the lasting impression you get from the game. Mm-hmm. And that feels terrible and I'm, I'm here to tell you that that that's that feeling's not wrong i'm going to try and make you feel better about that feeling but i am not going to tell you that that feeling is wrong you're absolutely valid to feel that way because of how we got to that final score mm-hmm. kyle the number seven ohio state is down and this is me defending the the passing game or the defensive passing game. Ohio State is down seven defensive backs from last year. Seven. We we all talk about Fuller, Arnett, and Jeffrey Akuda. We all know how talented they were. We all know they're in the NFL now. Mm -hmm. Ohio State lost not three, seven defensive backs off of last year's team. They also lost um, two safeties uh, who got themselves kicked off the team for being stupid and beyond stupid. But we don't talk about them in this for the same reason. I kind of don't want to talk about them right now because they did allegedly, 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 they did some awful things and they're no longer on the team. But from a pure football perspective, that's still two more defensive backs. You were down at Ohio state. Mm-hmm. Brandon white transferred to Rutgers. That's another safety who could have potentially contributed. And he's not. He's he's playing for Rutgers. And then, of course, Cam Brown goes out for the season with an Achilles injury. Uh, was that the first or the second game, Kyle? One of the two. <laughs> yeah, it's okay if you don't know. Um, so that's seven. That is seven defensive backs. Yeah. Ohio State is down from last year. I don't care 
how much you want to say, well, Ohio State doesn't rebuild. Ohio State reloads. And I get that. But seven defensive backs. Mm -hmm. That's this. And, of course, we didn't know about Cam Brown during the offseason. But we all should have seen this coming during the offseason. We all should have seen this coming. Kyle, you want to pick out a number? 169. Nice. Master Teague rushed for 169 yards. He ran for six and a half yards a pop against Indiana. Now, Jared. Yeah. Now, Jared. Yeah. We got a lot of people who just are not fans of Master Teague this year, which okay, I can understand. The first couple of games you can look at and you're like, oh, he's not getting not getting the kind of rushes we're used to seeing from Ohio State running backs and blah, blah, blah. All right. Ready to throw some numbers at you, Jared. Okay. Ready to throw some numbers. Master Teague, sophomore, versus J.K. Dobbins, a sophomore. Kyle, I really have to go address something super duper quick. You do this. I'll be right back, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right. Master Teague, first four games of the year, has 73 rushes, 380 yards, averaging over five yards a carry. All right. Over five yards a carry there. J.K. Dobbins, his sophomore year, through the first four games of the year, he rushed for only 323 yards and did it about five yards a pop as well. All I'm saying here is that Master Teague is definitely not on the same level as J.K. Dobbins, especially his his last year's third year there. But if you're comparing sophomore to sophomore year, Master Teague is technically having a better season than J.K. Dobbins did his sophomore year. Master Teague has six touchdowns in the first four games. J.K. Dobbins, his sophomore year, through four games, two. He only had two. Have we addressed that Mike Weber was getting a higher dosage of the share of the carries than probably Sermon has got so far? Yeah, that too. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I but, think but that's still, probably like, worth noting. But, but still, like, you look at the yardage and even, like, the attempts, like, yard, like how many okay. yards per attempt, Master Teague is surpassing J.K. Sophomore, Iris. sophomore. And, and I don't know that... And I, re I resent what I said then. <laughs> and I know that J.K. JK's worst year out of the three was his sophomore year. But yep. if you're comparing second year to second year, technically Master Teague is having a better year so far. Kyle? That is that is good podcasting. Thank you. All right, <laughs> next next number. Uh, let's see. 31. 31. The number of points Jared predicted Indiana would score. We've we've covered this. I've already darn close. I've, yeah. Yeah. Um and is that this all has to them? be said. This, this has nope. to be said just because it's it seems to be getting worse and worse every week. And so I've always keeping my fingers crossed when it comes Tuesday and Wednesday coming around, keeping my fingers crossed. 16. 16, the number of games that were postponed or canceled from last weekend. Yeah. And it does seem to be getting worse. And for God's sake, can we push back the playoffs? Please? Yes. No, absolutely. And, and that's why, and that's why Ohio State trying to not be the next team that has to cancel because of because it being at Ohio State, that's why we saw that absolutely no fans, no or no parents are there as well, which sucks. Yeah. It really it really does suck. But if it means them being able to play some sort of season and not and still be eligible for the uh, the conference championship, I think it's it's definitely a sacrifice that needs to be taken. Yeah, uh, Michael Penix, who. I was hyping up on Friday. Throws for over 400 yards. Over 400? He almost threw for 500. Almost, oh yeah, <laughs> almost 500 yards. Uh, yeah, he's a very, very good quarterback. I and, also and, let you know that, that the wide receivers on this team were very good. In, in that game, Penix was the better quarterback in that game. Um... I don't know. He only caught. He only. He only had one turnover. He only took two sacks. He threw for five yard or five touchdowns. I mean, yes, they they had to rely on Penix more to be able to win the game. But you know what? 
he he took that on his shoulders and he excelled. He, he, also, he definitely excelled. He also threw barely over fifty percent completion percentage. He also actually fumbled, and they just didn't count it. And his one turnover he did complete or commit that he did commit was a pick six. One team needed to come back from behind. And whenever a team needs to come back from behind, you, you're always going to get quarterback inflation. I, I don't know. It's was he better that day? You can you can make the argument. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but I I that's the thing I've heard people repeat, and I just I don't think it's a fact. Again, you want to make that argument? Go right ahead. Uh, significantly more yards, less turnovers, but like Justin Fields had more yards per attempt. So we can look at nearly 500 yards, but we also need to acknowledge that he threw the ball 51 times. Justin Fields only threw the ball 30 times. That needs to be said. Oh, uh, let's see. We have talked about Master Teague. We have... Uh... Kyle, did we cover number eight on our list? We did not, which is one thing I was just wanting to talk about. Eight. Yes, please do. Indiana's longest run of the day was eight yards which is nine more than they had total for the day. I will just say this. Ohio State's defensive line. Yeah. Superb. They did a really good job. Against now, the were, run. Against the run. Now, they only had two sacks, but to be fair too, Penix has been, and I, and I watched some, some of the game again a little bit. Penix got rid of the ball pretty quick. It was hard for the defensive line to get at Penix yeah. for most of the game there. And that goes back to the defensive backs giving way too much cushion or just not just not playing well at all. There was just so much separation between our defensive backs and Indy and his receivers that Penix was able to get rid of that ball a lot quicker than some of the times that we saw fields where he has to hold on to it a little bit more because of the type of zone that Indiana was playing. Yeah, and I think it's... Ohio State eventually adjusted. Mm. But, but the defensive tackles, especially the interior right there, that yeah. defensive tackles of uh, of Togi. Man, Togi just had a... Haskell, Garrett. Garrett, Togi had a great, great game. Defensive tackles played superbly. Um, we aren't getting productive. Like, of course, Chase Young was something else. Absolutely something else. But Ohio State's not getting the production out of their defensive ends that they're used to. I think I think Cooper had a, a good play or two, as did, as did Zach Harrison. But they aren't getting... I think we needed, or wanted anyway, Zach Harrison to sort of... Again, not be Chase Young as a junior, but maybe be Chase Young as a sophomore. And, and we aren't getting that. And I... Ohio State's not getting the production out of their defensive ends that uh, they normally count on because they do put their defensive backs on islands. It's a thing Ohio State's done for a very long time. One of the reasons why they used to get away with it a lot was because of the pressure they would get from their defensive ends. And that's not mm -hmm. happening right now. Yeah. All right, I think that's all the numbers. Did we get all of the, the numbers? Yeah, I think that's about it. And I think it's time to hear from our sponsors here, Jared. That's a good call. All right. What do we what do we got over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company today? And I told you a little bit about the unicorn. Uh, so I'm going to talk about why you should out of all the place out of all of the places that make coffee, that roast coffee, why you should turn to Iron Bean Coffee. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world class hand roasted micro batch. Fresh to order, fresh roasted to order coffee company. They do not roast the beans until you buy them, which is amazing. It's, it's really great. Uh, you are supporting 
a Ohio-based company. They are out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo. It is a company that is veteran-owned and whose beans are organic and fair trade certified. Coffee beans come from impoverished places a lot of the times, and a lot of the times the farmers and the people working are... It's not always good. With Iron Bean Coffee Company, you know you're getting high-quality beans that were farmed in a way that won't make you feel bad. Um, some of their more popular coffees uh, do come available in K-Cup, and if you have a coffee snob in your life, but maybe you weren't quite as coffee snobbish and you don't know what they like or what's good or, well, you can always just get them a gift card or you can get them a sampler pack where you can get six small things of coffee. So either one of those I think would be great for the coffee lover in your life. Again, you got a gift card or you can do the sampler pack or since you get free shipping over $50, you could do both. Go ahead and toss that out there. You could do both. Uh, and if you do find that one coffee you love, or if they find that one coffee they love, you can save money with a subscription service. And you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron, Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mentioned some of the, uh, the box sets that the Mad Canadian has. So let me Let me go over them with you here. He has three box sets for your holiday spending. We have the whole hog, which is, he describes here, this is the mother of all box sets. A great present for that pit master in your life. You get one bottle of each of our seasons in this set. That's right, one bottle of each season. Never be lost for a flavor again with this complete collection from Mad Canadian Barbecue Spices. You can go with the, the Sweet Heat, which has the Four Horsemen, Discord, Old Fashioned, and the Two Border. And he says here, want a little heat? What about some sweet? Why not both? Get two of our hottest pair with our sweetest in this box set. Definitely a great set for chicken wings. Hey, he's listening. <laughs> and the third one here is the Just Send It, which, cons which consists of the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, Cajun, and the Smoked. It says here, it's a collection of our most versatile seasoning. It's the all-around collection. You can do just about anything with these four seasonings. Be sure to check those out at themadcanadianbbq.com. And while you're there, save even more with the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. There you go. All right, Kyle, let's, uh, we have a bunch of Ask Sloopcast questions. These are all, I think, almost all entirely about the Ohio State-Indiana game. So as far as I'm concerned, we're still in the Buckeye bounce back. Um, some of these we may have covered already. Some of them we may not have, but uh, let's work our way through. All right, first one here. Our geographically ch challenged friend. Who joined the Discord. Yes. We, we guilted him into it. Yes. And I think he likes it over here. Michigan he, he, does. Bucknut, he does. Michigan Bucknut says, is the problem with the DB's technique or scheme? Yeah. Um, That's a very and, good question. And I think um, we got a similar question from Country Buckeye. Um, she asks, so poor performance in more than one area. What's the blame? Nerves, poor preparation, coaching. Is Indiana that good? Uh, similar question. Essentially, the question here is why? We aren't used to a complete position group at Ohio State failing. Mm. And I sort of went over this when I talked about the fact that Ohio State is down seven defensive backs from last year. You weren't preparing. You may, like, okay, you were preparing to lose Akuda, you're preparing to lose Fuller, you're preparing to lose Arnett. Those guys were leaving. You knew that at the beginning of last season. You had time to prepare for that. But you didn't know you were going to lose three safeties, two of whom to criminal charges, a third went to Rutgers, and then Cam Brown, you thought all offseason you were going to have, 
until he ruptures his Achilles. I think, it, by the way, it might not be a rupture. I don't know the actual detail of his Achilles. But he hurts his Achilles. Uh, so, yeah, you're hurting for depth. You're hurting for talent. And you have a lot of people in there, especially once you start bringing in your nickel corners and your dime corners, who just aren't ready yet. Who aren't ready yet from an experience standpoint, from a developmental standpoint. So when Michigan Bucknut asks us, is it technique or scheme? It's kind of both. Yeah, I was thinking kind of both. Uh, I think because it, probably more so with the technique. And there's a couple of plays that really stick out in my mind. The one, especially when they really covered it right on the spot, when it was a, I don't think it was a touchdown. Maybe it was. Uh, pretty much you had two, yeah, two receivers were pretty much running almost fly routes. And then you had the, the outside corner covering out. And then you had the safety coming down but then it was for some reason covering the outside receiver and then the inside receiver just did a fly straight up and no one was covering him yeah that i think was a touchdown and i'm going to say that i don't like calling out players but marcus hooker is playing very very poorly mm -hmm. um, another person too if you want to start throwing names out there jared it's seven banks Seven, okay, so Seven Banks, I think, gives up the first big play by Indiana. And let me say that he, he bid on a double move. But I still think someone should have been over top. I don't know if someone was supposed to be over top or not. Yeah, there, but... there was there were so many mis mistakes, just so many miscues there, too. Like, there was another one where it looked like they were playing man-to-man, -man. But I don't know if it was Banks or a different corner. They they seemed like they were playing. He was playing zone, but was playing a um, a quarter zone like up front, and the receiver just kind of went right by and was like, "No one's here," and just wide that open. How that was a linebacker. So if you want to ask yourself, was he supposed to be man to man, or was he supposed to have the the flat zone? The mm -hmm. yeah, probably was supposed to have the flat zone because. I don't think you're asking your linebacker to cover one-on-one -on -one, man to man on the outside like that. Now, if they are scheme issue, yeah. but I don't think that they were. So he releases the wide receiver, assuming that someone is supposed to get him deep, but no one was there deep. Yep. So I think, I think it's a little bit of both. I think I definitely think there is. And it goes back to what we've said before too, is, it's just the preparation, the practice time to prepare for this. We're still, we're still, this is their fourth game. And I understand like, well, they're halfway through their season right yeah. now. And we've got, we have to, at this point now, we're four games in now. This stuff has to be cleaned up now. It has to be cleaned up. I don't know that it can be. And, that, and that's the question. Will it be or will it not be? Because we can talk about scheme and technique and talent and, and all of those things. But ultimately, you want to say, well, get so-and-so out of there. I don't, I don't know who you're putting in to replace them. Yep. And, you know, there are some really talented young safeties that came onto the team, but they're, they're talented, but they're young. And an abbreviated – so you have to start talking about the fact that this is 2020 – and they had a very abbreviated, stinted, interrupted offseason. You lose seven defensive backs and then add 2020 on top of it. And then, by the way, you also have a new secondary coach. And I get that this is not Kerry Combs' first rodeo at Ohio State, but he's, it's a new secondary coach. So you have a new secondary coach. You're missing seven defensive backs and then 2020. We should not be surprised that Ohio State is having issues in the secondary. The good news I have for you is that Ohio State is capable of scoring with anyone in the country in case you get into a shootout. And no one's playing good pass defense right now. Everyone's getting lit up. Bama's been lit up through the air. 
Clemson's been eaten up through the air. Florida's been eaten up through the air. Everyone's getting eaten up through the air this year because 2020 happened to everyone. And it's a little bit easier for quarterbacks and wide receivers to click in a, you know, I don't know. It's easier for quarterbacks and wide receivers to sort of click and get their timing down and to carry that over from one year to the next than it is for defensive backs, especially when you're talking about working zones. Mm -hmm. That being said, it's still schematic because at some point you need to admit that you can't do what you want to do and start focusing on what you can do. And I think Ohio State's at that point because I don't think from a talent perspective or developmental or technique standpoint that things are going to get significantly better this year. So you have to adjust this game. Mm. All right. Uh, Stuart underscore E4 U.S. vet asks, uh, let's see one. That's not what we talked about. Uh, Let's see. Do we do, do we do any adjustments at halftime? Why have we got waxed in the second half of the last two games? Well, I'd like to point out that, you, you were talking about halftime adjustments. Ohio State was up twenty-eight to nothing, or excuse me, twenty-eight to seven at halftime, and then immediately came out and scored and put it up thirty-five to seven at halftime. Or I mean, it, after the first drive of the second half, Ohio State was up thirty-five to seven. The better question is: is there is there a problem with trying to make adjustments during the game? Not, I don't think so. Um, Ohio State was not picking up blitzes all that well, which is why we saw sacks and mistakes and holding calls in the first quarter. And you saw in the second quarter, Ohio State adjust and start moving to quicker passes. Mm-hmm. That's a thing that they did. And I saw a lot of people like, why aren't they, you know, they're blitzing, run a screen, run a screen, run. Indiana, the Ohio State was running those screens and Indiana was not biting on them. I'd like to point out that Justin Fields' is second interception was on a screen pass and one of the reasons why he panicked through it towards the sidelines but didn't make it to the sidelines or maybe it was at was it Olave doesn't matter to begin with was because Indiana covered the screen there's no worse feeling as a quarterback than going to throw a screen because you know pressure is coming because your offensive linemen are out there with the running back and then realizing that the screen is covered Now, Justin Fields at that point should have immediately thrown it out of bounds instead of trying to make something happen. But that's that's the type of (laughs) day Justin Fields had was it should have been a little bit more um, a little a little quicker to throw the ball out of bounds. And again, I think this punch in the nose that Justin Fields took is a good thing Mm -hmm. because now he's not super worried about his completion percentage or winning a high, and by the way, he can still win a Heisman. Anyone who says that his Heisman, that's that's ridiculous. He can yeah. still win a Heisman. That's, but it hurt, but it's not out of the, it's not it's, way it's out of the way. It's yeah, fine. He's fine. He's fine. Uh, Z Spike sixty eight. Since we had two weeks to to prepare and try to fix some of the issues in the secondary and didn't work, is the secondary now in an unfixable disaster for the rest of the season? No, not unfixable disaster. But, but it's definitely I, a concern. I, it's, it's a concern. It's, it's a concern, and it will be for the rest of the season. And this has to be the coaching staff that fixes it now because I don't think there's anything wrong with Ohio State's scheme, generally speaking. But I don't think that the players on this team are capable this year of running the scheme. Mm-hmm. So you have to adjust the scheme. And Brawley was asking about, is it scheme, technique, or discipline that's causing our safeties to never be in the right position on the deep passes? Um, first off, I'm going to say Proctor's been playing well. So I would like to knock the S off of that safeties and, and put more of it on, on one of them in particular. Yep. But uh, I would say technique and discipline or... I'm think- a Discipline is another big one, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. And by the way, like, just on discipline real quick, mm-hmm. if you're holding Indiana to minus one yards for an entire game, hey, safety, 
Maybe don't, don't rush. Don't don't rush the line of scrimmage. Don't bite. the the big the big dude's got it. Don't bite. The linebacker's got it. The D line's got it. You don't need to go rushing up there on a on a play action pass. It's really just not necessary. Well, especially for how many times they've been throwing the deep balls. Yes. Give them that extra space in front. Keep everything in front of you. <laughs> you know what? That would be a good thing. It's almost like um, you're back there as a safe blanket. Some sort of um, safe T player. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Something like that. Something like that. All right. Uh, let's see. Stewart underscore E4 US vet. Did it hurt us having a week off? No. I mean, no. we talked on the Friday episode about how, and I think he does actually go on to say, yeah, he does. Especially yeah. since it would have been again. Yeah, we, we talked on the Friday episode how it would have been nice to sort of take a baby step because Maryland would have been the best offensive passing team Ohio State had played all year. And then Indiana is that much better. Yep. That baby step would have been nuts. Yeah. He has uh, one more question here. So maybe yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did what, I talk what, my way into a yes on that? Yes. What's a truer statement? Indiana is a well-coached football team, with better talent than they've had recently, or Ohio State mm-hmm. isn't as good as we th- think we are, or Ohio mm-hmm. State isn't playing up to its full potential right now. So Indiana is a well-coached team and, and has better talent. That is a true statement. Better talent than Indiana's past. Is that mm-hmm. what we're saying when we say better talent? Yes. Okay. Not better talent than Ohio State, but mm-hmm. better than previous Indianas. So which was more true? That part or Ohio State isn't playing up to its full potential right now? Um, which one is more true? Yes. That Indiana's a good football team. That is more true. Ohio State, I, I've already waxed on about what's wrong with the defensive backs. I think the defensive line, the interior of the defensive line is playing excellent, exceeding my expectations. The defensive ends are playing fine. I'm not saying the defensive ends are playing poorly, but Mm. they aren't creating the same production that we're used to out of Ohio State. And I think the linebackers, well, I'll just put it out there like this. Ohio State fans aren't complaining about the linebackers anymore. Nope. And that was their favorite thing to do for like the past three years. So I think the linebackers are playing fine. At least, yeah. I saw like one bad play from Pete Warner, and I think, quite frankly, he was put in a position. In he was which put he in a tough shouldn't. one, and thankfully, the the running back couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he be Pete Warner probably shouldn't have been in that mm-hmm. position. Probably the second um, most concerning position right now is what Brawley's next question here is: This O line was supposed to be good, if not great. Yeah. The issue seems to be communication and picking up blitzes. Is that First, a reason or an excuse that the line isn't as good as expected? That's a reason. Um, because that's not an excuse. That's a terrible accusation. Four games in, that they have communication issue and that they're not picking up blitzes, that's not an excuse. That's an accusation. It'd be one thing if we were talking about week one or two. No, we're talking about game four. Uh, that's not an excuse, that's an accusation. And it's a fair accusation. And it's an accusation that we also need to start talking about Justin Fields as well. Mm -hmm. Because he can and maybe should be adjusting or assisting, is the word I wanted there, assisting in calling out blitzes and making sure that everyone's on the same page and picking them Mm -hmm. up. Yeah, And I think for the Indiana game, this I think this is true here. He said... Schematically, is it time to go back to a too high cover two man instead of running cover one man? They were playing some two safeties in the second half. Uh, maybe they should be doing that with more regularity. Mm, yep. But, or, may, or maybe not, depending upon how you feel about Ohio State safeties right now. Yeah, yeah. But maybe two true safeties... Is, is the way to go because a lot of the time they're playing with one safety over top and then Pete Warner's playing uh, that sort of safety hybrid position. But maybe two true safeties is a necessity. But I again, I want to point out that both Proctor 
and Hooker were on the field during much of the second half. They were in too deep safe. Well, I don't necessarily want to say they were in too. I don't have the all 22 to say that they were in too deep safety the entire second half, but they did have both of those players out there for the second half. Mm-hmm. Yep. Next question. Yes, next question. And I've seen this a number of times here. Is it safe to say Sean Wade hurt his draft stock coming back? Is he a true outside corner or should he stay in the slot? Uh, did he hurt his... Uh, I hate to say it, but yeah, I think so. At this point right now, yes. I I, I think he has. I also don't think he's playing nearly as badly as people are accusing him of playing. I think that he is being put one-on-one a lot. And I think that even on a lot of the plays in which he has lost, he's not been... They were contested. He's not been out of position. Uh, I don't think... And I'm not saying he's playing... Well, and the two. one, the one, the the one that was a I was touchdown, about to say, the one that was a touchdown, that was an offensive pass interference. You could you could clearly see the receiver, just like just like you Do just we, like you saw it in uh, Kyle Friday night's game here. You can see the wide receiver extending his arm out, creating space. That by definition is offensive pass interference. Yeah, so is sending your tight end blocking ten yards down the field on that a passing too, play. Yeah. But let's not even crack that can open because we're already an hour in. And if you want to get me started on Indian, <laughs> by people who kept calling them pick plays, they weren't pick plays. They weren't even trying to disguise the offensive pass interference. The tight end was running down the field and blocking dudes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk some good things here. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Will Garrett Wilson surpass Chris Carter's record of consecutive 100-yard games? Garrett Wilson is now four. Chris Carter's is five. Will he surpass? So that saying that he needs 100-yard games against Illinois and Sparty. I think he has a good shot at that. I I think based on the talent level, so well the, well, the talent levels of Illinois, and by the way, they're low. Just so we're clear. Will the talent levels of Illinois and Michigan State help or hurt in this? Probably depends upon if he gets those early yards or not. Yeah, and we saw too, like, oh boy, like the amount of passes that are going toward other receivers. There's a very good chance, yes, because you look at you look at Indiana game here. Of the 18 completions, three. Only three were completed to outside of Wilson and Olave. For how many catches in total? Olave had eight catches. Wilson had seven. Sermon won. Juice Williams won. And JSN won. What was Austin's question about like 14 receptions not to Olave or Wilson? You don't have to look it up. I think it was something like that. Not even close. (laughs) Yeah, no. you could, you could have subtracted ten off that number. <laughs> All right, uh, going along with that here, have Olave and Wilson cemented themselves as one of the best receiver duos in OS, his, OSU history? Almost there. Almost. Cemented? No, not, in not the cemented. Com- in the conversation, absolutely. Yes. The debate can be made. The way that they're going, if they continue this rate, yeah. You, you could probably start I leveling think, off think, that cement. Well, <laughs> and <laughs> part of the issue I think we have to consider is comparing cross-generation statistics is, because yeah. passing is just a different thing than it was 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago, let alone 30 years ago. So it's, it's hard to compare apples mm-hmm. to apples when... Even though you're like, oh, receiving yards to receiving yards. But yep. the eras are just so different. Yep. But they're, it, they're in the conversation, absolutely. Yep. Cemented, no. Dinger, have you ever seen that many pick plays in one game? Yes. I told you not to get me started. I'm going to say yes. Damn it, Dinger. I'm going to say yes. Because Ohio State has done that many times in the past. So, yes. <laughs> Listen. Legally. There- there is a difference between running two guys on a crossing pattern and if something happens, something happens versus 
Sending your tight end downfield to block. Yes. Now, you do you, did does Ohio State has Ohio State in the past run a lot of mesh concepts and a lot of bunch concepts in Everyone order to be shaking their head. Yes. <laughs> I haven't got to the butt yet. <laughs> in order to create rubs, in order to create screens that naturally happen because the players are all cramped together. Yeah. That's, that's, that was a big thing of Urban Meyer's offense, and they still do it now. Maybe not to the same extent, but it was a huge thing in Urban Meyer's offense. But there's a difference between creating chaos with your play design versus cheating. Knowingly, willingly, by design, cheating. God damn it, Dinger, I told you not to get me started. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Duncan, Duncan from the Discord. Who's your mid-season coach of the year? Oh, boy. Mid-season coach of the year. I, I don't know. Fickle. That's an answer. Um, Matt Campbell. Luke Fickle. I'm just naming guys who are up for jobs. <laughs> is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I don't know the BYU coach. I'm not going to think of the BYU's BYU's coach's name, but uh, I, I think he certainly deserves a, a look or two in that I mean, discussion. Even though, even, even though they lost Tom Allen, even Tom, though they lost Tom Allen and Greg Schiano. Mm-hmm. More on Greg Schiano here in, soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Next also, question. I, he also asks, did I hear a boo track in the shoe during some of those bad calls? Yeah, you did. Yeah. I didn't think the Big Ten was going to let that happen. But it happened. Yep. All right. Uh, last question from our homie Suncard. What are typical ways an offense makes a defense pay for blitzing and were the Bucks trying to do those things? I recall it, they tried to do it a couple times and they succeeded once to make a defense – Ease up on blitzing and extreme blitzing screens. But they tried. Indiana was great for a team that was blitzing aggressively. They were also very good at not biting on screens. I think Ohio State had, Ohio State ran a bunch of screens, and I think only one of them was successful. Mm -hmm. That being said, I would have loved to have seen some quick passes over the middle to the tight ends. Yes, tight ends. That's exactly what I'm if the, the tight ends or doing like chip blocks, get the running back out there then in the space too. You listen, know, one play, You know, one thing that really made J.K. Dobbins really succeed, him going out just doing a uh, I forget the exact pattern, but angle and then cut right back to the middle there, wide open right there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if. I don't know if Master Teague has that kind of agility to do that compared to J.K. Dobbins. But Sermon does. Sermon but, Ser- but Sermon does. is also a bit of a liability in the pass protection. You mm-hmm. want to know why Ohio State was so susceptible to tight ends during the Greg Schiano era? Because he always had the linebackers playing up. And because he liked to blitz his linebackers or move his linebackers around, which does what? Empties the middle of the field, which does what? Leaves lots of room open for tight ends. Yes. Yep. That's what you need to do. They tried with the screen passes and they tried with the swing passes. Mm -hmm. Would have loved to have seen some more love to Jeremy Ruckert and crew. Yes. All right. That is it for the game there, Jared. Uh, Like we mentioned before, Ohio State plays Illinois next Saturday at 12 o'clock on Fox Sports 1. All right. Let's get ready to go national. Yes. Let's go national. And hey, look at that. We're running over. So. Let's go ahead and do this lightning round. As always, Minnesota beats out Purdue 34 to 31. I have no idea who Minnesota is. Me either. They're great one week and trash the next. I also Uh, think Purdue is overrated. Illinois, Ohio State's next opponent, beats Nebraska 41 to 23. I was not expecting that big of a beatdown. Illinois getting better, question mark? Maybe. This game happened at the same time as the Ohio State game. Um, I haven't got a chance to watch like the Big Ten. You can watch the uh, the Big Ten re-airings, which is a thing I plan on doing, but I haven't had a chance to yet. So I have no idea what happened here. Is Illinois getting better or has Nebraska folded for the year? 
I'm going to watch the film and let film. I'm going to watch the thing on the Big Ten Network and I'm going to let you know. Florida beats Vanderbilt 38 to 17. Kyle Trask is good. Uh, that's that's really he's he's very very good. I understand that Vanderbilt isn't. Uh, and by the way, Florida struggled early with Vanderbilt. It's not just Ohio State, you guys. Everyone everyone has games like that. They they pumped up the score at the end, but it's fine. Speaking of pumping up the score, BYU 66 <laughs> over Northern Al- North Alabama 14. That's only to say BYU is still humiliating people, but they still haven't played anyone. And Kyle, when you said, speaking of pumping up the score, I thought you were going to ironically take us to the next game. Northwestern and Wisconsin. <laughs> Northwest, this was surprising. Northwestern beats Wisconsin 17 to 7. Um, Kyle, as the official driver of the Graham Mertz hype bus, mm-hmm. I would like to resign. <laughs> next, he's still very talented. We'll see next year. He off season 2020, all that crap. It's it, it's it's weighing pretty heavily. A lack of experience yep. due to where they what, all the games Wisconsin missed. All yep. that. Graham Mertz yep. still has a great future, but the wheels have fallen off the bus for him and by proxy Wisconsin for the year 2020. Yeah, Northwestern in the driver's seat right now in the Big North West. Absolutely. Iowa spanks, absolutely spanks Penn State 41 to 21. I only added this to our going national to say this. Penn State has been playing college football since the 1890s. The 1890s. This is their first 0-5 start ever. That's a record you don't want to break. No, it's not. That's, that's not sometimes with college football we say, well, the highest da 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 in the modern era. <laughs> nope. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Right. Oregon Oregon beats UCLA 38 to 35 to stay undefeated. Again, a close one. UCLA not that great. Yep. You got you gotta keep an eye on keep an eye on them. Speaking of another team to keep an eye on. Cincinnati staying undefeated as well, beating out UCF 36 to 33. Kyle, I'm mad at you. Okay. Because I was I was like this close to picking UCF in the slew picks, and mm-hmm. then you talked me out of it. And I think literally everyone in the slew picks in our online slew picks, literally everyone picked Cincinnati. And uh by the way, of the three pickers, of the three on show pickers, I won. Yes. All right. <laughs> Alabama. Uh, Stuart underscore E for US vet was the only person to go above 500 in this week's slow picks. After a great week last week, we all collectively shat the bed. We did. Yes. Speaking of shat in the bed, Kentucky three <laughs> points. That, to Alabama that, 63. That, that, that bed was shat in a long time ago, Kyle. <laughs> uh, I don't know why you put this NC state. 15, Liberty 14. Well, because Liberty was previously undefeated and, mm. and ranked. So this realistically might be the only actual team chaos of the week. All right. Uh, Michigan in three overtimes defeats Rutgers. <laughs> and had to come back to do it. Oh my God! It's it's just so much fun. I almost lost my headset. That's how much fun we're having. Yes. God, Michigan is terrible. Penn State is terrible, and it's just the best. That that's it. That's all I wanted to say. That division is terrible. Oh, by the way, by the way, can <laughs> can I couple? You mean the division we're in? Oh, yeah. Can I <laughs> can I couple that to say that Tennessee <laughs> Rutgers almost beats Michigan? Tennessee. Loses pretty handedly to Auburn, who's also not very good. Hey, Clay Travis. We're going to do this again, Clay Travis. Someone clip this, just this part of the show <laughs> and send it to Clay Travis. How are you feeling about costing Tennessee Greg Schiano and putting Pruitt in? Because this is your fault. I want you to know that, Clay Travis. Clay Travis, this is your fault. You caused this. Your favorite program is in the complete shitter right now, and it's your fault your fault and no do not say well greg shiano and penn state and blah we didn't believe you then we don't believe you now 
Don't say it. No one believes you. No one believes you, Clay Travis. You screwed your own football program. You, as a fan who is in no way associated with the football program, ruined it. Some people joke about wearing the right socks or wearing the right hat or wearing the right pants or sitting in the right chair. And just to sort of give us some sort of false sense of control that somehow we can control what our favorite football teams do when in actuality we're just fans. You, as a fan, actually screwed your favorite football team. And it is a very rare distinction. You're basically the Bartman, the, the Cubs baseball fan of college football. Congrats, buddy. Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee. One of the one of the most laughing stock programs in the Power Five conferences. Uh, Michigan, Penn State, Texas. I can keep going, Kyle. It's a it's a real at it's least a- most of those have winning records most of the time. Uh, with Michigan and Penn State and Texas. When's the last time Tennessee won their conference? Uh, when's the last time Let me, Michigan... let me call Peyton Manning real quick. See if he... <laughs> T. Martin. Peyton Manning. Can't pay, people, revisionist history. Peyton Manning did not win the SEC. Did he win the SEC? But he didn't win the national title. Tennessee won the national title the year after Peyton Manning with quarterback T. Martin. I was 11. Why do I know these things? <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, it's just, what a joke, joke of a, of a football program that is. I was just looking to see like when the last time they won a conference and I just do not care anymore. I just do not care. <laughs> last time your, they won the your division. Scroll, your scroll finger got tired. It did, yes. <laughs> the last time they won their division was in 2007. And I guarantee you, they didn't win it that year. <laughs> yeah. Guarantee you they didn't. All right, they, moving on. They did uh, not. Oklahoma beats Oklahoma State 41-13. to 13. So every single team in the Big 12 now has at least two losses. Big 12 we, joked, we joked a long time ago about how the – the Big 12 was out of contention. They were out of the playoffs, eliminated. Now they really, really are. Like, mathematically. That's it. That's all I wanted to say about that. And I'm sorry I dropped my phone on the right. desk. And last one here, Georgia beats Mississippi State 31-24. to Kyle, they finally, they finally put in JT Daniels, the former five-star recruit transfer from USC. Finally. They played the walk-on, whose name is a hat. They finally... <laughs> I think that's funny. They finally put in the former five-star recruit. And guess what? He walks into a game in which Georgia was losing, lights things on fire, and then Georgia wins. Kyle, my question to you is this. Why does Kirby Smart hate five-star quarterbacks? I have no idea. No idea. First, Justin Fields, now JT Daniels? Why does he refuse to play five-star quarterbacks? I don't know. Stenson Bennett. I pray to God, Stenson Bennett. Stenson's a hat, right? Stenson Bennett. Please start next week. I want it so much. (laughs) Well, no, Stenson Bennett's our guy. All right, real quick here, Jared. Since the the playoff committee is coming out with their first rankings, we're going to... We're going to project ours top four yeah. top yep. four teams Jared. yep yep who do you got bama notre dame ohio state question mark that's <laughs> <laughs> that's been my uh, it's probably clemson in all honesty it's probably it's clemson so yeah, in that that's, order that's, that's what i got that's what i got and i got right there at a close fifth cincinnati I don't think it's close, honestly. I'm sorry. I, I want it to be the Bearcats. In that 5-6 five, want... five, Cincinnati and Florida. Florida. Uh, BYU? I mean, they've literally beaten no one, but they're doing so impressively. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. All right. That is it. That is it for this episode. All right. Um, I want to encourage everyone to do all the things. 
Uh, make sure to visit our Discord or join our Discord. Uh, there's both a we we have the premium section. We also have a free section. Uh, we got uh, several new members this week. It's growing in popularity and therefore fun. So lots of people in there. Come join our Discord. Um, if you want the premium channels or if you want early access to episodes, uh, premium placement in the Ask Sloopcast, um, participation in offline events. Uh, make sure to visit the Patreon uh, and join up for at least the $3 tier. That'll get you access to all of the things you want. Uh, Kyle, that's all the talking I feel like doing. What do you have in Kyle's corner? Uh, the crew. The Columbus crew beats New York Red Bulls 3-2 to two to move on in the MLS playoffs. That team is to be determined. Yeah, more on that. It's complicated. I Very think complicated. Was... They play... Philadelphia, Kyle, Kyle. New England, Toronto, or Nashville. One of those teams. Yeah, it's complicated. So, But they don't play until next weekend, so we'll tell you who they play on, on the next episode. Anything else in Kyle's corner? I um, want to say congrats to a few Ohio high school football teams. Yes. These are the winners of state championships, minus one, which is be playing here in about an hour from when we're recording. Well, we'll just shout them both out. Yep. So, since they St. Xavier, New Bremen, Akron Archbishop Hoban, Kirtland, Chardon, and Van Wert, which Van Wert's victory is their first in school history. Nice. And Division 6 is New Middleton Springfield and Coldwater, which beat my my good old Columbus Grove Bulldogs. So. Yeah, so we don't know. Yeah, we don't know who won Division Six yet. I think they kick off like an hour or so into our future. But uh, whoever wins that, congratulations to them as well. Kyle, mm-hmm. is there anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. That's it for today. Okay. Uh, prayers up to Joe Burrow. I'll go ahead and toss that out there. That uh, that looks bad. And that I look hope nasty. He's, I hope he's. I think. All right. I was about to say I hope he's okay, but I'm pretty sure he's not. So there's I hope a, there's he's... some great photos out there of Buckeye players just there to support Joe Burrow. Yeah, like there's a yeah, he was playing the Redskins, and there's a lot of Buckeye players who play for the Redskins. Yeah. And Jared, I'm sharing a second picture as you can like see here. Like the first one here, you can see there's like a really close up of Haskins, just pretty much just like butting heads with Joe Burrow, and then there's another one where where Haskins is there and McLaurin's there. I think you meant Chase say, Young is there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, Chase Young did, and of course it's football. Not, not, it was not intentional, but Chase Young did play a part in the injury. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it was a football play. It shit happens. No one's, no one's yeah. blaming him. But all that's missing here was like Billy Price, and then that would have been from Cincinnati in that picture frame, and that would have been just perfect there. Yeah. But, so yep. that Buckeye blood runs deep. Yes. As right, Kyle, say, the, the brotherhood. Yes, absolutely. Anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. Okay. Uh, tonight's ending music will be a punk band. Uh, I think out of Dayton. I, I, I'll, I, you can figure it out for yourself. Visit their band camp page and figure it out for yourself. Uh, but the name of the band is City Cop. And so go ahead and check the show notes for the name of the song, a link to their band camp or something else page. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is City Cop. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns now second place in their division. Mm-hmm. As of right now, as we're recording. You say you say that like I care. <laughs> oh, well, how do you always figure this out? How do you always show up for the YouTube section? How do you do that? You're a very good boy. You have very good timing. Yeah, except when you bump the mic in the first part of the show. That was not good. To, uh, no, you're still good. It's still good. Don't don't look sad because I said you weren't. Say say hi to the camera. Sniff the microphone. It smells, smells the same as it smelled last time, buddy. I promise. All right. Uh, let's rejoin our audio listeners. I'll do the ad read with Apollo on my lap. I do not care. All right. Once again, I'd like to 
thank City Cop for ending today's show. And of course, I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Kyle, I told you why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, in the second ad read. In the first ad read, I told you all about the Unicorn, which is their fun R&D random bag of coffee. Uh, let's talk about some of their not flavored coffees now. Let's, let's talk uh, about some of their other ones. First off, there is the Fierce. The Fierce is a dark roast that is highly caffeinated. So if, if you're someone who likes to get a buzz going in the morning, I'm going to direct you to the Fierce. Uh, my favorite so far, and I've only had a few so far, so I reserve the right to change this later. My favorite one so far would be the Cast Iron. Uh, that's a medium roast. Uh, there is the Odin, uh, which is a dark roast. And there's a, there's a trio, actually, of Nordic-inspired named coffees. Uh, there's also the Thor, which is a medium dark roast, and the Loki, which is a medium light roast. Uh, you can get a Rocco. Uh, the Rocco is... Uh, Ethiopian beans. You can get that both medium and dark dealer's choice. Uh, and there are others too. The, the list keeps going. I'm not going to read them all to you. But if you want to see them all for yourself, you can go to ironbeancoffee.com. Christmas is coming. They do gift cards. They do a sampler pack. Uh, the packaging, by the way, is rad. I want to say that they have really rad packaging. Um, the I want, I've, I've been saying this lately, and I think it's true. They sort of have like a craft brew attitude, but they roast coffee instead. That's sort of how I've been I've been thinking about them lately. And the product is great. And like I said, ironbeancoffee.com. Christmas is coming. Do the sampler pack. Do some gift cards. Uh, free shipping over $50. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Swoopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian is an Ohio-based company. It's been around for a year now. It's been around a year and has been... With, a, with us. With us. With yes. us for a year. With us, yes. Um, Dog barks. Just, just power through it. We're almost right, We're going to power through this. Just right, power um, through let, it. Let's go through his rib section. Um, rib rubs. He has here the old-fashioned. It's an interesting um, spice. It um, mimicked off of the classic drink. Um, it has a sweet bourbon with a right kick of bitter. Or you can go with the Discord. It's, uh, let's see here. It says here, uh, it's our way of the Four Horsemen. It was a very spicy seasoning. Um, has a has another blend that's fantastic. Uh, like I said, it's similar, but with a sweeter base to it. You can go with Coffee and Q, one of Jared's favorite there. It's a blend of coffee and barbecue seasoning. That the coffee is the cast iron, by the way. Yes, that offers just the just the right about of coffee flavor and barbecue flavor that will add that something extra to your food. Or you can go with the tube border. Tube border is a great maple, sugar, um, pepper type of seasoning. Great for great for like breakfast meals. Put that on some eggs. Um, it's just a great great seasoning, especially for especially for your morning routine there. Check out these and all the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ. That is madcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SWOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Hey, YouTube. Real quick, I think I forgot to say this last time. Um, my face, playlist. Listen to all of the season six episodes. Kyle's face, subscribe. It either says Buckeye Scoop or it says Buckeye Sloopcast, depending upon which channel you're watching this on. Uh, I don't care where you watch it, but please subscribe to both channels. Peace.